We are just about to enter October and we are still top of the Superliga. Zero defeats to our name. We have unfortunately drawn another game against 7th place Lingby, which is not ideal, but we are still obviously top. Randers in 2nd on 24, Copenhagen in 3rd on 23. It's still definitely a three-horse race, but obviously still very early days. In between episodes, we have managed to beat Vela 4-2. We beat PAOK Salonia, I think that's what they're called, 5-1 in the Europa League, which is a massive win. Jan Lundsgaard even played and scored twice. Yes, he is, I think he's 16, is he 17 now? He might be 17, he's 16 years old. He scored twice. The 3-3 draw against Lingby could be one of the worst things to happen to us because, as we know, we often lose the league by one or two points. So that drop two points there could be terrible. Also, Mamadou Gay, our former player, scored another hat-trick. I think he scored a hat-trick in the last episode. And then a 3-0 win against OB. Today, it's going to be Vittoria Guimaraes, it's going to be Southampton, and it is going to be a Villarreal in the Europa League. And I think we should be able to get six points from those three games. We're not going to care too much about what's going on in the league as long as we finish... In the top three, I think, that's what we need to be aiming for. Top three for the first little preliminary phase. The starting lineup then for the Vittorio Gomara's game at home is going to be Hindrich in goal. Jack Leonard, Ekwala, Darlan and Pelamati in defence. Ekwala has come in for Leffa Gordon, who he's perfectly fine to play, but he really does need a rest. And I don't want to play him unless we have to. So Ekwala's getting a chance in the Europa League. Orlando, Colorado and Schulman in midfield. Pete and Prada on the wings. Barisic leading the lines. I was tempted with Lundsgaard. Obviously, after scoring twice against PAOK, I was tempted to go for it. But I think Barisic is probably the better option because Guimara's going to be a better team, aren't they? I am wondering whether we're getting to a point where we need to look at changing our formation. And hear me out. We've got a lot of young attacking midfielders and strikers. We play one striker and two wingers. We don't play central attacking midfielders. So maybe we need a formation that kind of fills the middle a little bit more to try and get some of those players more game time. Players like your Denton Barnabas, your Jan Lundsgaards, your Carney Arrows, people like that who don't really get the chance to play because they don't fit our system particularly well. Or if they do, they're normally behind Bartol Barisic. 12 minutes on the clock. It's taken a while for something to happen, but it is a goal. It's a goal for Vittorio Gomares. Not ideal. Martins with a headed effort. I, it just trickled across the line. We're probably going to get VAR or goal line technology here. But it is 1-0. Not ideal at all. And straight into another highlight after the goal as well. Hopefully, this is a 1-1. Ekwala with the ball. I feel like he's going to be blamed for the goal, isn't he? He's normally blamed for the goal. Hulmund to Prada. Pelamati with some space to run into. Three options, maybe four in the box. It's on the ground to Barisic. And it is an immediate response, literally 30 seconds later. Free kick for Vittoria Gomarez. Nelson Diluz plays it across to Martins, the goal scorer. Takes his time, plays it backwards. I'm worried that they've got the ball in the penalty area. It's a superb save. Hindrich can't get the second one either, though. It is 2-1. There's been three goals in three minutes. I don't like the fact Ekwal is on a 6.5, although he's just gone up to a 6.7. So maybe it wasn't his fault. 26 minutes. Hindrich has the ball outside of his area, which is a concern. Orlando Meyer to Pelamati. Schulmund goes through the middle. Colorado's off to the right. So's Pete. Pete's first touch was not the best. Ekwala, where are you going to go? Forward to Maya. Pelamati's on the left with lots and lots of space. Go down the line, buddy. Go down the line. Prada. Pelamati's carried on his run. He's not. He's stopped. Found Barisic. And Barisic's effort whistles past the far post. It's gone wide for a goal kick. Hindrich with a goal kick for us. Pelamati's going to keep that in play. Weird goal kick, that. I don't know why he put it in the air. Why don't he just kick it on the ground? Pelamati all the way back to Hindrich, showing that he should be able to kick that distance without the ball coming off the ground. Pelamati's ball over the top. Prade is not going to get there. Hulman finds Barisic, so that's good. Leonard's cross comes in, and the ball's found its way into the back of the net. I'm not sure. It's going to be an own goal. Nuno Correa. Okay, fair enough. I mean, that entire highlight was ruined because I needed to cough in the middle of it, but wonderful. Prada with a free kick. We are still not quite at half-time. Ekwala towards Barisic. Ekwala's gone for a headed effort from there. If he managed to score that, that would have been mad. Five minutes still to play of the first half. This is end-to-end -end stuff at the moment. Handel... Down the line, Prada steals the ball away, but he's going the wrong direction at the moment. Finds the goalkeeper, Hindrich. We've got four minutes and 30 seconds plus injury time of the first half to play. Barros, ball over the top. Ekwala with a big headed effort to get it clear. Pete's now running down the line. Back to Jack Leonard. He's going to go on the ground, finds Pete. Barisic is in the middle. It's fallen for Bartol Barisic. And have we taken the lead? I think we have. What a turnaround. So far in the Europa League, we have scored eight goals in two, um, one and a half matches. 
Eight goals in one and a half matches. I mean, arguably, we've scored seven because Correa scored one for us. But still, it is... It's, I mean, we're doing well. Defensively, we're struggling. Jackie Boy is the, uh, is the issue here. Is it because you're not really a right back? You're more of a right winger. Do we look at bringing on Mossen? The only reason why I didn't play Mossen, by the way, is because he was slightly injured. Um, I think we're going to do that because Mossen, he's, he's our starting right back, isn't he? He's very good. He's also only two and a half star, apparently. We've got a free kick. Prada is the man to take it. Our most expensive signing goes for a curling effort. Actually hits the wall straight away. Prada collects again, though. Down the left-hand side, number 10. Stops, plays it back. Pelamati to Shulman, through to Prada once again. He's gone for goal, dinks it over the keeper a little bit, and it is 4-2. We are one minute and 10 seconds into the second half, and we have doubled our lead. And that's also goal number nine of ours for the Europa League so far this season in just two matches. Um, we're certainly good value for entertainment, aren't we? Uh, Bo Bo Borovkovic could have been his name, not quite sure. Martins is in on goal. Hulmund, not Hulmund, Hindrich. Hulmund's a midfielder. Hindrich is our goalkeeper, makes a decent save. Still only 50 minutes played. Handel's gone over to take it. Where is it going to go? Towards the middle? It's, I was going to say middle or front post. It's gone towards someone. And it's Handel once again. Back to Barros. He's gone for goal. And Hindrich with a spectacular save. Conceding another corner. But not conceding a vital third goal for Gomares. Handel's corner then. Where is this one going to go? Front post once again. It is towards the front post. Moss and clears. Handel's first time pass. It's edge of the area. Nelson Deleuze. Hulman comes in. Big kick away. And that should stop that highlight dead. Parade with a free kick. Still only 55 minutes, so five minutes have passed in between those two highlights. This is this is ridiculous. This is going to be like a 35-minute video at this point. Saar to Barros. Helder Saar once again back to a different Saar. Barros has lost out to Jean Carlos Colorado. He's going to go for a run. Goes for a long-range effort instead, actually. Just over the bar and a bit wide. Still 4-2. I'd love it if the game calmed down a little bit. We've had far too many highlights. Well, since I said that, we've had no highlights at all for about 20 minutes, which is good. Right, time to do some changes, and we're going fitness rather than performance, I think. Kjulmund is going to be coming off for Milas Markovic, and then we'll swap you two round, because I think Markovic works better as a Mazala. Do we also do... I was going to do Pelamati, but he's playing very well. Ekwala probably shouldn't be playing. If we do Ekwala coming off for... Where is he? Malakamir. Which is still mad to me that Malakamir is playing for us. I didn't expect him to still be here when we're playing in European football, but there we are. I think that's going to do it for now. We've got two more subs to do, which I think is going to be Barnabas coming on for Pete. And it's going to be Lundsgaard coming on for Barisic. Hopefully Barisic can get himself a hat-trick before we do that sub. Mossen's got the ball. Is this a highlight or is this just because of the subs? Barisic with a headed effort. It's a good save. He was offside. I think we're going to do Barnabas and Lundsgaard for about 10 minutes at the end. So... We'll wait for this highlight, actually. I was going, just going to do the subs before. Will's got the ball for Vittorio Gomares. On the ground, Nelson Deleuze is blocked by Hindrich. Hindrich has had a very good game, even though he's conceded twice. That wasn't really a highlight, was it? Right, Pete is coming off. Oh, no, we're not doing that. We're going to do Prada coming off for Barnabas, and then we're going to do Barisic coming off for Lundsgaard. And that is all of our changes. It's a bit of a risk keeping Darlin on, keeping Pelamati on due to their fitness, but, you know, there's 10 minutes left to play. There's not really a huge amount going on. They've just made it 4-3. Or have they? It was the offside. The referee's blown for offside. We're getting VAR. I'm hoping that was offside. I wasn't even paying attention. He looks like he was miles off. By the... Yeah, he was miles off. We're good. We're safe. Into the final few minutes then. It doesn't look like much else is going to happen in this game. It's going to be a 4-2 win. We do have four minutes of injury time though. So maybe there could be a fourth or a fourth, a third goal for Vittorio Gomares. Or maybe a fifth goal for us, Darlin. Ball forward, Pete, ball over the top, Lundsgaard's not going to bother chasing onto that one. Cleared upfield, head of forward, we should be getting there first, and we do through Pelamati. Number three, plays it back to Hindrich on a 7.2 rating for a goalkeeper's pretty decent. Malik Amir to Colorado, back to Orlando, Markovic, Amir again. We've got three minutes, Denson Barnabas chests it down, the Micronesian winger. Crosses it to Colorado. First time pass to Markovic. Back to Orlando. We are just looking cocky. Barnabas is in. Plays it through to Lundsgaard. And was was Denson offside? Was Denson offside? I know we've just won the game, but that little highlight at the end has made me, first of all, very happy that Barnabas assisted Lundsgaard. And then very annoyed that Barnabas was offside. Oh my word. I did not expect to see that. Top of the Europa League after just two games. Also... Bartej Borisov have scored nine goals against Gothenburg and three hat-tricks from three different goal scorers. 
that's that's impressive. I don't think that's ever going to be beaten. And not that we need to do it right now, but because we've got a lot of transfer budget, I'm going to ask to increase the wage budget. I say transfer budget. We've got a lot of budget. We've not got a huge amount of transfer budget, but we are overspending. So I'm going to ask them to try and increase the wages, which hopefully we'll find out before the end of the episode. Next up then, we're going to go forward. We're going to play Bromby and Viborg off camera, and we're going to head to the south coast of England to play against Southampton, a team that I support. It's the day of the Southampton game, but I need to show you this. We have dropped down to second place in the table because we have drawn once again, this time a 0-0 draw against Bromby. We did beat Viborg only 1-0. Barisic with the only goal, Hulman getting sent off, an injury for Jack Leonard. We've got some suspensions which are potentially going to cause some issues for our Superliga kind of charge. But we managed to pick up four points from a possible six, so it's not the end of the world. Obviously Copenhagen now ahead of us. Let's play Southampton and we have a somewhat weakened side because... Basically, Jack Leonard's injured. Leffer Gordon still needs a break. He didn't play against Bromby, I don't think. So I did. I played. I played him against Bromby. Maybe that was the problem. Shouldn't have done that. So because it is the Europa League, we are going to have to go full strength. And unfortunately for Leffer Gordon, that means he is going to have to play, even though he really does need a break. But I can't find a window in the calendar to give him a decent break. And when I do. I accidentally play him because I'm an idiot. So it's going to be Hindrich in goal, Mossen, Gordon, Darlin and Pelamati in defence. Orlando, Colorado and a Shulman in midfield. Pete, Prada and Barisic leading the line. So that is arguably our best starting eleven. In fact, that is our best starting eleven. I wouldn't know who else you'd put in there. I also mentioned in between the matches that we are trying to get ourselves a bigger wage budget. The board said no. So that's not happening. The Southampton team, I mean, I probably should have paid attention to that. They've got Daniel Everson. A former goalkeeper of ours, I say of ours, he wasn't technically of ours, but he was a former Esbjerg goalkeeper, I believe, formerly of, I think he's in Leicester. So, you know what happens in Football Manager when you play against a former player, they normally score against you, so expect Daniel Everson to score a goal in the last minute. Morgan Gibbs White with a corner for Southampton, a headed effort from Taylor Howard Bellis goes over the bar. It's obviously a very different Southampton team to what we know in real life, but they do still have Livermento, they do still have Lavia, who've obviously moved on. I think we should be decent enough to do some damage. Maybe not a win. A draw. I'll take a draw, I think. Especially away from home. So Andrew to Oliveira. Lavia to Gibbs-White. On the right-hand side is Tino Libramento. Going to go for a little run. Ramsey's ball forward. Balogun in the middle to Ben Brereton Diaz. And the Chilean international tucks it past Hindrich. It's 1-0. I did kind of say to myself I wanted six points from these three games in this episode. So if we lose the Saints one, it means we have to beat Villarreal. Balogun's cross comes in, Colorado heads clear, Lavia's collected though for Saints, goes for a long range effort, goes over the bar, still 1-0 but Saints looking very much the better side. We've got a corner though, Pete's the man to take it, we have got a person going short as well, so Leffa Gordon is there, he's not going to get on the end of it, Colorado to Shulman, get some space, and Morton Shulman blasts the ball into the back of it, a player who was linked to Southampton in January I believe. In real life. So we've managed to get on level terms. That is very good. This is a terrible camera angle for a highlight. Seven minutes left to play of the first half. Saints coming forward once again. An absolute mess on the edge of the penalty area. Mossen manages to get the ball clear for Pete. Back to Mossen. He's lost out to Juan Larios. On the ground to Balogun. He was offside. Don't need to worry about that one. It's still 1-1. He wasn't offside. Are you joking? Who was playing him onside? There is no way he was onside. Oh, number four was playing him on. Left for Gordon played him onside because he was tracking back Larios. And that meant Balogun was onside. Poor defending, to be fair, from Darlin. And I guess number three. Oh, that's not good. Straight after the goal, though. Highlight, obviously, because, you know, that's how we do. Left for Gordon with it. Mossen on the right-hand side. Two in front of him who both broke past the defender. Colorado's got it. Barisic is there. Palamati's also there. Poor first touch from Palamati. And Mossen now has a running race on his hands. Olivero back to Juan Larios. Soyuncu, ball forward to Gibbs White. In the middle to Aaron Ramsey. Olivera to Brereton Diaz. Can he get his second of the game? He can't. He's rattled the bar and it's gone off for a goal kick. We are very lucky to still be in this game at this point. To have that goal from Hulmund, I think, is kind of a bit of a lifesaver for us because we can go in at half time, have a little bit of a word, maybe try and do a half decent team talk for once. And possibly try and turn this around in the second half. Barisic's ball finds Orlando who just kicks it straight to a Southampton man. And now another attack for the Saints. Gibbs White goes off to the right hand side. Darlin kicks him. I'm, I'm there thinking that's a penalty. I'm so glad that's not a penalty. It looked like Darlin just kicks Gibbs White. Because he didn't get a shot away. 
It's 2-1 at half time. Saints have been ridiculous. I'm not happy. Show me something else in the second half. Defensively, we've been real bad. Offensively, we've been even worse, apparently. Pete, Prada and Barisic have got an average rating of a 6.4 across the three of them. If we don't see an improvement, Pete's coming off for Denson. Barisic is coming off for Lundsgaard. And we're, we're trying to put our faith in the young guns. It's weird to think that players like Pete and Barisic aren't young guns for us. But, you know, nothing's happened. So far, we are 70 minutes in. Nothing's happened in the second half. So we are going to go for Barnabas. Lundsgaard coming on. I mean, we've got yellow cards for Darlan and Pelamati and Schulmund. I want to keep Schulmund on, really. Do we do Pelamati for Gercic? I think we'll do that. Left for Gordon needs to come off. But I feel like... I mean, he's not playing great, is he? He's also not playing badly. We've got five subs. Let's do three for now. If nothing's happened by, say, 80... 83, 84 minutes, something like that. We'll possibly do ourselves another sub. Gibbs White with it for Saints. Back to Walker Peters, who's still at the club. It was Aaron Ramsey heads just wide. I think that's Aaron Ramsey, isn't it? We've got a corner through Colorado towards the front post. Darlan's there, and Darlan has equalised. The corner routine may have just rescued us a point. We've still got 15 minutes to play, so there's still a chance to get a winner for either team, to be honest. Mostyn is on a 6-3. Prade is on a 6-3 as well. I think we'll do another couple of changes. Prade is going to come off. Carniero is the man to come on on the left-hand side. Is that... I mean, you can play there. Apparently, you can play there now. That's fine. That's good. I've done a lot, enough training that that works. Mostyn's going to come off for Fulster. That's all of our changes. Mostyn's on a 6-2. That was... I mean, he's played real bad, and I don't really know what he's done. Colorado collects it. Denson's off to the right, but Colorado can't keep hold of the ball. And now Saints can counter-attack once again. So many white shirts. Gibbs White's in on goal. And that's horrendous. That is possibly one of the worst finishes I've seen in my life. Into injury time. And it looks like we are going to nick a point. That's good. That is a very good point. When you look at the match stats, that is a very, very good point. Schulman gets an 8.0. Hindrich in goal on a 7.4 because he saved 8 shots. That's a very, very good point, actually, when you look at the match stats. And it keeps us in the top eight, which is where, obviously, we want to be. We're now going to go forward to the final match of the episode, which is going to be Villarreal, a team who are third. We've not got the easiest opponents, have we? Right then, the final match of the episode is upon us against Villarreal, but we've played three more matches. We've beaten Nordisland 1-0, we beat Holbach 4-0, and we played a fully rotated side. Thomas Strino making his debut, and another draw, this time against AGF. It means we are second place in the table. One point behind Copenhagen, because I believe... They might have lost or drawn the last time. They did. They drew 1-1 with Nordisland. So we are keeping pace. Randers, unfortunately for us, are also keeping pace. We need to stop drawing so many games. Five draws is a lot of drop points. That is 10 drop points in 14 games. The starting lineup then for the Villarreal game. We're at home for this one. It's going to be Hindrich in goal. Colorado is going to be in at right back today with Leffer, Gordon, Darlin and Pella Matty playing Colorado at right back because Mossen... He's good, but he's not great. As a right back, Colorado is just as good. So I'm going to stick Colorado there because it gives us the opportunity to play Orlando, Humund, and Nestor Babu, who should be getting a lot more games than what he actually does. So he's going to be in midfield. Denson Barnabas and Prada on the wings. Jan Lundsgaard leading the lines. Pete's not particularly fit, which is why Barnabas is starting. Barisic is currently out injured for six more days, which is why Lundsgaard is also starting. I was tempted with Markovic. But Lundsgaard's the future of this club. He's literally one of the few players that we have in our entire squad that is 100% homegrown. Him and Malik Amir. So I kind of want to try and get him good enough to play and keep him at the club forever. So as we saw at the end of the Southampton game, Villarreal are actually one of the better teams in the Europa League. They're, I think they're third, if I remember correctly, or maybe fourth, something like that. So they are very, very good. We are obviously slightly worse, but not, not majorly bad. We're still technically undefeated as well in Europe. I think we're undefeated in all competitions apart from the Champions League. So, you know, that's pretty good. We played Ajax and lost. Six minutes on the clock and we've got an early chance coming from Colorado's cross. It's terrible. It's fallen for Lundsgaard, or almost did. Prada with a long-range effort goes over the bar of the Villarreal goalkeeper. Nil-nil, early chance going our way. Prada collects it, plays it to Colorado, loses out. Not ideal. And now Villarreal can come forward. Orlando with a slight tackle. One of our two, two players named after American places. It's Elmas in the middle. It's taken a couple of deflection and no Rostel has made it 1-0 to Villarreal. I think this is going to go a similar way to the Southampton game. You know, I think they are going to absolutely batter us and we might be lucky to get a point. 
I think we need to use this experience in the Europa League as a learning experience. I think that's what we're going to try and try and brand this as because I don't think we're good enough for the Europa League. I didn't think we were good enough for the Europa Conference League. We're certainly not good enough to defend that corner. It's 2-0. What I was trying to say is if we don't go through the Europa League group stages, I don't see that as a particularly bad thing because we'll go, hopefully, anyway, we'll go into the Europa Conference League and then we should be in a much better position, be able to win some of those games, be able to actually play some of our slightly more rotated people. Although, last time around in the Europa Conference League, we did have some kind of tough opposition as well. And obviously, we didn't win the competition. So, yeah, we, we I don't know what I'm talking about, if I'm honest. There's a highlight going on. Maximiano with the ball to Alakan plays it on the ground. Lamptey on the right-hand side. Chuck Woozy, ball four to Rostel, one of the goal scorers. In the middle to Elmas. Is he going to get his second of the game? He doesn't because Leffer Gordon is there with a very good little kick. Gordon, by the way, this seems to be a, an episode where I'm talking a lot about Leffer Gordon's fitness. He's missed a couple of games intentionally. He's playing this one. He's going to miss the next one. And then we've got a 10-day break. So this is... I'm trying to manage his fitness well. I don't know why he's struggling. Nobody else is. Half-time, it's 2-0 to Villarreal. And they're just, they're just much better than us. We've been terrible. I'm going to say that. Colorado's on a 6.2. I literally picked you because I thought you were better than Mossen. Let's go back to Mossen. I don't like the way it's said as well. Jan Lundsgaard, our young 16-year-old striker, is looking ill-disciplined. I mean, you're 16, mate. Right? You're playing in the Europa League. You should probably just enjoy the moment. Mossen's ball forward. Hulman collects it. In the middle is Lundsgaard. He's not going to get there. I think it's Gu Gutierrez possibly was the man to kick that ball off. We've got a corner. And we've got, it looks like, possibly Leffer Gordon at the front post. Darlan's also there. Darlan's not going to get on the end of it. Villarreal can clear. Lamps, he's going to go for a run by himself. I'm hoping the highlight just ends. If he gets something from this, it's fair play. Chuck Woozy's ball across to Elmas. Somebody steal it. It's intercepted by Palamati. Hindrich can just do a big kick upfield. Prader's going to hopefully keep this alive for us, maybe. Babu with it. Seen very little of the Romanian, and that just ended the highlight. Lundsgaard's on a 6.1. We've got to take him off. We've got to take Lundsgaard off. We're going to do Markovic. Barisic, I know, is on the bench, but he's he's still got six days before he's kind of ready to play. He's in rehab, so we don't want him to play. Hindrich with the goal kick to Darlan. 60 minutes on the clock. We've obviously still got three subs that we can do. Two breaks to play. Barnabas' ball over the top. Markovic is offside. Doesn't matter. That's, I mean, you can't call Markovic offside because he was not offside when the ball was played by the defender to him. The goal's disallowed. Where are you saying he was offside? Because if it was that ball there, it's not gone to him. It's gone from Prada. He's offside from Prada. Just, that's not fair. I mean, it's fair. That's how the offside rule works, but still. Well, it looks like we're not getting anything from this. So the three Europa League matches we played in this episode, we picked up four points out of a possible nine Unless something turns around in the next 15 minutes and we score two or three goals here. Which I don't think is going to happen, is it? Boyomo to Jackson. They've brought Nick Jackson off the bench. That's how good this Villarreal team is. Orlando to Darlin. Plays it in the middle to Leffer Gordon. We've not really seen a lot of Gordon either, have we? Hulmund to Mossen on that right-hand side. Spins and goes backwards and then eventually goes forward to Barnabas. Hulmund with it. Spins. Mossen this time on the right, through ball to Denson Barnabas, across to Markovic. Markovic tucks that ball away. They're flagging for another offside. I mean, they're not flagging. The linesman's got his, his hand down. So does that mean it is a goal? It is going to be a goal. It's 2-1. This game is not dead and buried just yet. Denson Barnabas has gone from a 6.2 to a 7.2 thanks to one assist. Right, let's do some more changes. I'm not really sure what we can do. Do we do Carniero for Prada? I think we do that. Try and get a little bit more action down the left-hand side. Gertic as well. We've got one more sub. I don't really think we've got anyone who's going to change the game on the subs bench. They're all defenders or Pete. We'll just do that. Obviously, we've got Barisic, but as I mentioned, I don't want to bring him on. Bernacer with a free kick. Final five minutes. It's, it's We've done all of those subs to try and change the game in our favour, and they've just made it 3-1. Well, full time then against Villarreal, a 3-1 defeat. We were not very good, were we? Let's be honest. We weren't very good, but we did manage to get that goal. Villarreal arguably should have scored more than three. So that defeat means we do drop down to 13th place in the Europa League. But if we remind ourselves, anything down to 24th place goes into the knockout playoff round. And then I think if we lose the knockout playoff round, we end up falling into the Europa Conference League. I think... I will double check. I'm not sure how I'll double check. 
I think that's what happens. I'm not even sure anymore. Anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. Next episode, we are going to have more Europa League action, I think. We're going to come back for the Familial game, might be how it's pronounced, in the on the 11th of December. Then we've got a huge, huge break. And then we've got the January transfer window, which, if I just remind you, uh, finances... We've not got much money. We've got half a million pounds and our wage budget did not get increased when I asked the board. So we're still overspending. So I don't expect a particularly exciting January. I think we need to just try and get some Danish players in because that is the big struggle that we have is we do not have enough Danish players, enough homegrown players. So when we register people for Europe, we kind of end up having empty spaces. We like register 23 people because we just don't have enough homegrown players, which is starting to be a bit of a problem. That's going to do it then for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'll be back next time with the final three Europa Group League games. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.